Hey y'all, Dr. Carmen Corder with thedoctornurse.com and today we are going to talk about the thyroid because um, my students have a lecture coming up over the entire endocrine system in their critical care class. So I thought I would hop on here and do a quick video covering one of the most important endocrine subjects which is hypo versus hyperthyroidism. Now I always like to tell my students about the endocrine system because it is very easy to feel overwhelmed by the system. It's like if you can understand the etiology, the pathophysiology, the most unique signs and symptoms and what's most important about one endocrine disorder, then you already understand the other one because they are virtually polar opposites. So we're going to kick it off and talk about hyperthyroidism. So I have the most common etiologies listed first at the very top and you can see for both conditions that it's mainly an autoimmune issue. So our own immune system starts attacking the thyroid only in a little bit different ways. So with hyperthyroidism this autoimmune disease is called Graves disease and I try to teach my students that um, this one will really kind of send the patient to the grave kind of faster um, than hypothyroidism because of the very significant and severe complications that can result um, from a thyroid emergency which we're going to talk about down here at the bottom but in Graves' disease, what happens is that there are these little autoantibodies produced by your own immune system that actually make the thyroid kind of respond or over-respond to stimulation from TSH, which is the thyroid-stimulating hormone produced by the pituitary gland. So these little autoantibodies make the thyroid overreact to stimulation from TSH and what happens is that the thyroid produces way too much T3 and T4, which are the primary thyroid hormones. And y'all know that T3 and T4 play a huge role in metabolism. They also make your body respond more efficiently to catecholamines. So not only do they in and of themselves increase your metabolic rate or, and play a big role in metabolism, but they also make your body more responsive to those fight or flight hormones. So now that you kind of understand what T3 and T4 do, then you'll be able to understand um, what's going on in the body when these hormones are overproduced. Now, with an increased metabolism due to excess amounts of T3 and T4, obviously you're going to see signs such as weight loss. Um, everything is going to be hyper, 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 right? So weight loss, diarrhea, um, just kind of anxiousness, anxiety, maybe tremors. Um, everything's just going to be sped up. Tachycardia even. Well, with the um, with the endocrine disorders, you know, it's all about, you know, understanding the patho. And if you understand the patho, you will understand those basic signs or symptoms. But it's also very important to understand the unique signs and symptoms because it's the unique signs and symptoms that set these disorders apart from one another. So with hyperthyroidism, with Graves disease, we're going to see something called exothalamos. And you know, ophthalmos or the ophthalmus, that word right there tells you that it has something to do with the eyes. And what happens is that the eyes begin to like bulge out. And if you really kind of picture this in your mind, if you picture somebody with bulging eyeballs, it kind of fits with the clinical picture of hyperthyroidism. You know, everything's hyper, hyper, hyper. So they have bulging eyeballs. And that's due to little deposits of connective tissue that get deposited behind the eyes or in the uh, orbital cavity in people with Graves' disease. So that's exophthalmos. The other thing you'll see is a goiter. Um, just because of the overworked thyroid and the thyroid just begins to expand and become large in size. And you can also see a goiter with hypothyroidism, but for a different reason, again. So those are the unique signs and symptoms. Now, what is going to kill our patients with hyperthyroidism? 
something called thyroid storm. So first and foremost, you've got to have underlying hyperthyroidism to go into thyroid storm. You don't just wake up and you're in thyroid storm one day, right? So you have underlying um, hyperthyroidism or you're on, you're on thyroid medication, thyroid replacement or something, and you can experience a stressful event in your life um, and that can send you into a thyroid storm. Something else, and this is a big test tip, you might be tested over this, vigorous palpation of the thyroid can send someone with hyperthyroidism into a thyroid storm. This is absolutely a medical emergency that can kill your patient. So you need to know the signs and symptoms. So what are the signs and symptoms? Well, it's all those things that we discussed, only they are extra hyper. So you have extremely high heart rate. You might see dysrhythmias like AFib with RVR. Extremely high blood pressure, so very dangerously high blood pressure. And then hyperpyrexia, or extremely high dangerous temperature. Now, all of these things being said, what are you as the nurse going to do? Well, your priority is always to keep the patient stable until we can get in there and get some medical treatment and reverse the underlying cause. So the key thing that you'll probably be tested over when it comes to thyroid storm and hyperthyroidism is maintaining um, a quiet kind of low stimulus environment. Obviously you're going to put them on a cooling blanket to keep their temperature normalized. You're going to be giving antidysrhythmics to control the heart rate. Um, you're going to give antihypertensives to bring the blood pressure down. So it's all about supportive care until we can reverse um, the underlying cause and get the patient out of the thyroid storm. So remember that low stimulus environment. Um, cluster your care. That's a big one on nursing exams. So that means, you know, stimulating the patient as little as possible. So if you've got five things to do with the patient, try to do them all at once, okay, and allow the patient rest periods in between care and med administration and procedures and diagnostics and things like that. Now lab-wise, what you're going to see is elevated T3 and T4, obviously, but you'll see a decreased TSH, and that is because of negative feedback. The uh, pituitary gets the message like, hey, we have got way too much T3 and T4 here, so we're going to dial back the TSH. So with hyperthyroidism, you'll see elevated T3, T4, and a low TSH. So over here on the hypothyroid side, again, hypothyroidism, most often an autoimmune issue where your immune system kind of turns against you and starts attacking the thyroid tissue. And this is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? So Hashimoto's thyroiditis is when there are antibodies actually produced against the um, thyroid gland itself. And uh, there's going to be underproduction of T3 and T4 with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And so what that means is a slower metabolic rate. So you'll have exactly the opposite types of signs and symptoms that you would with hyperthyroidism. So a slow heart rate, a slow metabolism, a lower temperature, um, a lower blood pressure. You might see some edema. Um, the patient might gain weight. They might be constipated. So everything is hypo and slow. All right, so those are the you know typical signs and symptoms that you would know to look for in someone with a low metabolic rate. Now what's unique to hypothyroidism? Something called mixed edema. And I don't know where this term came from, but that's what we call it. But with thyroid, it's all about the eyes, right? So with hyperthyroidism, you've got exophthalmos, or those bulging eyes. But with hypothyroidism, you have mixed edema. And what happens there, and you can kind of remember this because um, hypothyroid patients will be edematous. They'll be puffy. Um, but mixed edema is when there's little deposits of kind of edematous connective tissue deposited underneath the eyes. So you'll see these patients with very puffy 
looking um, edema right under their eyes and it just makes them look very very tired and so that's how I remember um, that mixed edema is associated with hypothyroidism because everything is low and slow and they have these puffy eyes like they're really tired and we call that mixed edema so what is our emergency when it comes to hypothyroidism is something called mixed edema coma well at least they named this one something that has to do with the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism right so with mixed edema coma also very dangerous you're going to see very low blood pressure or hypotension a very low heart rate bradycardia a very low temperature and then you might see an altered level of consciousness because uh, as you know, if the noodle, meaning the brain, is not getting perfused because the blood pressure is low, then our, our level of consciousness will be altered. So the patient might become a little confused, agitated, and progress to lethargy and um, even coma. That's why it's called mixed edema coma if you don't do something. So what do we do about it? Um, we're going to support the blood pressure. We're going to give fluids. We're going to give vasopressors. We're going to support the heart rate with things like atropine. We're going to increase the temperature, keep the patient warm. Um, we're going to also, you know, always support the airway because anytime there's a decrease in level of consciousness, you know, airway is going to be an issue. So aspiration risk is huge um, if they do have a decreased level of consciousness. Now with our labs, you will see decrease T3 and T4 because those autoantibodies have attacked the thyroid um, and it's not able to produce enough T3 and T4. Well, again, the pituitary senses that and it's going to overproduce thyroid stimulating hormone thinking that that's going to fix the problem. So you will see an increase in TSH. One more thing I don't think I mentioned about hyperthyroidism Another medical treatment for hyperthyroidism is something we call radioactive iodine because iodine is absolutely essential in order to produce T3 and T4. If you don't have iodine, then you will not produce T3 and T4. And so iodine is very readily taken up by the thyroid. So for medical treatment of hyperthyroidism, um, they will inject the patient with radioactive iodine, which actually is taken up by the thyroid, and it kills that thyroid off. But something that you want to remember about that is if we kill the thyroid off, obviously they're going to be taking um, thyroid replacement for the rest of their lives. Okay. Um, so then I just I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because that might be a big thing that you might see on your nursing exam. So back to hypothyroidism. You know, again, we're going to do all those supportive measures that we as nurses do until we can correct the issue. But obviously, these people are going to be on thyroid replacement, level thyroxine, synthroid. These folks are going to be needing to wear a medical alert bracelet um, so that people know, you know, if they uh, pass out or something in a restaurant, that it is very obvious that they have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that could very well be the issue as opposed to thinking, you know, maybe they're a, a DKA patient or something like that. So I just want to thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've gotten something out of this. Be sure to check out all the other videos that I have on the doctornurse.com as well as all the other resources, little infographics, PDFs, reference guides to help you guys out um, and succeed in nursing school. And again, thanks so much for watching my video and just have a uh, wonderful day.